What's up everyone, it's Matt Merzik, AKA MVM397, and this is work in progress number five or six for the Ag Dogga, I'm not sure. <laughs> so uh, this past weekend, I spent uh, a good amount of time spraying, spraying the first coat of primer on the Ag Dogga. So I've got three blocks of foam full of Ag Dogga parts. So here's some over here, Here's some over here. This is all the armor stuff right here. And I've got another uh, block behind me that's full of all like the internals and stuff. So the next step is the first round of, of sanding. So uh, I've got this broken up on various blocks of foam for a reason. I've got the armor standing here to my right because that's the, what's going to get the most amount of attention. And I've got the parts here to my left that I showed you that will get a little bit of attention. And as far as wet sanding, the, in, like the internals do not, I don't wet sand those because you'll never get in all those nooks and crannies and everything. So um, I really concentrate on the armor, making sure it's smooth and all the, all the imperfections are gone. And um, for the most part, um, everything's really good. There's a few spots I, I noticed when I was priming. And uh, so for those, I use my tr trusty uh, Bondo glazing putty. And I also like Mr. Surfacer's dissolved putty. So these are both excellent for filling pinholes, you know, minor imperfections and stuff. I tend to go with the Bondo glazing putty uh, more often because um, uh, I'm used to it. I used to use this when I painted cars and stuff and it, it, it works really good. And you can get it at Home Depot and it's cheap. So, um, But the dissolved putty works really well too. It just takes longer to dry. Um, but they're both good, good products. So uh, this video is not going to be really too long because it's just me sanding. But So what I used is uh, Mr. Surfacer uh, 1000 on these guys. And I think it took me... I started spraying Friday night. I sprayed for a couple hours Friday night. I sprayed for three hours on Saturday and then another two or three hours on Sunday. So altogether, it took me, I would say eight or nine hours to spray this entire kit with primer. Now it seems like a long time, but this first round I go really slow. I'm making sure I get everything covered very well, especially the armor. I wanna make sure I put a nice, you know, good amount of primer because most of this will get sanded off anyway but if you look at this part you can tell that it's really smooth and um, as far as my initial cleanup went I, I did a really good job on it and I just noticed some pinholes and stuff so what I do for wet sanding it's real simple I've got myself some water here I've got a few drops of um, liquid soap like uh, Dawn or something in there and that does two things one one th first thing what it does is it helps keep your sandpaper clean and I'm using, uh, this time I'm using uh, 800 wet dry. On my last kit, the Sinanju, I did 600 because that, that kid needed uh, a significant more amount of attention to the resin than this kit did. Um, I'll tell you that this Yag Dogger conversion kit is one of G System best, one of G System shops best kits as far as quality goes. Um, very few imperfections, uh, just a really good kit. And I mean, I forgot how many parts were in the sucker when I started priming. It's like, dang, aren't I done yet? <laughs> <laughs> so what I like to do is I like to put my paper in the water and let it soak for a few minutes. Um, it just um, makes it, it's more efficient. And if I was to start sanding right away, it would be really, really aggressive. Uh, and I don't want that. So I'm starting with 800, whereas on the Sinanjo I did 600. And I also have to the side here, I have a few sanding sponges. And I have a, a really worn out, super fine sanding sponge. Because brand new, a super fine 3M sanding sponge if you look on their website, it gives you a, a, a grit value of like between 400 and 500. They can't tell you exactly. Um, so that'd be like great for like an initial sanding. But with it, when, it, when it's used up like this, it's pretty, you know, it's not so gritty. Um, it's, it's really good for wet sanding. And then I have an ultra fine sanding sponge. And this is used a little bit. But if you, again, if you go to their website and look it up, I think it says uh, equivalent to, you know, 650 to 800, somewhere in there. So ideally what you want to do is you want to, um, since I'm only going to prime this one more time with Mr. Surfacer, I don't want um, a really low grit. I don't want a deep sanding scratch because I don't want it to prime again. And I don't think I'll have to uh, looking over the parts as I was priming. So another reason why this goes so slow is because um, the initial sand or the initial priming is because, like I said, I go really slow. I'm checking over the parts uh, th very thoroughly to make sure um, I didn't miss anything or try to make mental notes of areas that need some cleanup. And as far as additional cleanup, what I, what I found are really uh, some pinholes here and there. The one part that's going to need the most work is um, the shield. Uh, but, but, but it's right over here. 
let's see if I can show up. So, you know, as you prime, uh, areas pop out. So, like some of these edges need a little more work. Um, the shield was rough on this kit. You know, uh, you know, I, I, I won't say it's terrible, but as far as the kit goes, it was the worst part as far as the casting goes. And it, it wasn't bad. It was just it needs the most work. Um, the edges are a little rough. Some significant pinholes here and there that I have to take care of. So, um, yeah. So, I, and I put a lot of primer on, the, um, especially the armor. I put on, um, you know, I like dusted on one coat, and then I went on and put sprayed on three to four heavy wet coats because I knew it was going to sand a lot off. So it's pretty simple. Just get some wet, you know, let your paper soak for a little bit and you're gonna sand. <laughs> so, uh, and you're just, you know, this will help. It just makes it smooth and everything will get primed again. And you don't have to take all the primer off, but um, if you have any pinholes or imperfections, they should pop up relatively quick when you sand. So I'm not going to do a, a, a 20 minute video of me sanding, although I have been talking for six minutes because I talk a lot on these. And then I like to make sure I get the edges. I'm always doing the edges, I tend to get missed the most. So like I said, I really concentrate on the armor because that's what you see, um, that's what you're really seeing most of when this is on display. You know, I'm constantly dipping my paper back into the water to rinse it off. I have a towel here because this is a messy process. The Sananjo I spent, um, God, I spent a lot of time wet sanding that first round of primer. It seemed like it took forever, but it, that, man, that, that kit needed some work. <clears throat> that kit needed quite a bit of, of love to get the cleanup good. It's one reason I like their uh, G Systems older kits. Um, they're, they're just seeing higher quality. I mean, they're not. I don't know what it is. I like this. I don't like the colored resin. I think that has something to do with it. I think there's no reason for colored resin. You got to paint it anyway. And then I'll come back here and I'll lightly sand the backside. And then when, my, uh, <clears throat> when I prime this again, I'll prime it with uh, Mr. Surfacer 1200, which is a finer uh, primer. And then it'll be ready for paint. So I'll sand a few pieces here, and that'll really be it for this video. Unless I, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll look for some pinholes and I'll show you what I do with those. It's really simple. So that part's pretty much done. So I rinse it off and I look it over See if any pinholes popped out. See if I missed any spots. <clears throat> any spots for sanding. Da, da, da. And this piece looks pretty good. So this this again, this is another process that's not hard, this is very time consuming. So that's part. So that's done. So now what I'll do is I'll put it back on its skewer and I'll put it back on its foam to dry. No poo poo. All right, we put that over here. This is not one to go back on its thing. Come on, get off me. Let's dig into my hands. It's wet. Uh, let's look at where. Where's this? Yeah, this piece right here. This piece, I think it had some areas that needed some love. Okay, so here's a good example. Let's see if it'll focus. Come on, camera. The camera's not wanting to focus. There we go. So there's some pinholes right in there. See it? There we go. So that needs some love. So I'm going to take some of this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to wet sand this. I'm going to dry sand it first. And I'm just using the 800 again. I'm going to fill those little pinholes. And I'm 
I've got some, you can see some along here too. I'm fill all those too. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little dry. Somewhere, I've got toothpicks, I thought. Somewhere. No, oh, up here. I just got myself a little toothpick. It was glazing putty when you first open it. No, no. It may be a dry on the, very, on the very tip or maybe really soupy, so. Just get a paper towel and I'll kind of get rid of that initial crust on there from the previous time I used it. Maybe. Come on. Alright. It's kind of got the <clears throat> kind of got the the consistency of like Adobe clay when it's wet. So we're just gonna fill these in. I'm pushing down now to make sure it gets down in the hole. And I just use my, I just use, usually just use a toothpick to kind of get it where I want. And so they call this glazing putty for a reason because you don't want to put it on real thick. You just, want to, you just want to glaze it. So I'm pushing it down in the hole and I'm just kind of swiping across it. And this will dry in about you know, 30 minutes or so. But I'll probably, what I'll do is I won't worry about it until tomorrow or the next time I come back and work on this kit because um, I'm sure I'll have other areas that need some putty. So I'm going to get this little hole right here. The toothpick is great for putting out because you can put exact, you know, be getting get a really small area. Because this area would be hard to sand. So what I want to do is really fill it in and avoid having to try to get in there with sandpaper. So this, yeah, for some reason this piece was just not really good. Messy, but we're gonna sand it and it'll look good. Let's see. And then, other than that, on this piece, I just see some um, mold lines that I gotta sand out, and I can do that right now. So, um, let's see where I see it. Again, in the front of this piece. Come on. There's a mold line there. I'm gonna sand it out. So when I sand, you can see that there's like kind of a, a line there. See a line right, right going down the middle. <sighs> so that line you see, that line of primer, that's actually a mold line. So we're gonna sand that out. And once that primer is gone, I know the mold line's gone. A lot of times I'll roll the sandpaper like this and it gives me a little bit of a harder edge. So now I got that shape back and that mold line's gone. See, perfect. Again, I see like a little edge here that needs some work. And so this is just a really slow process. So I'm like at 15 minutes, I don't wanna keep jabbing on about sanding but this is what I do go through and sand every area make sure it's real nice and smooth and then um, I'll, you know I'll probably do this I get down the San Andreas sand it and I took a little break because this, this is really monotonous I'll throw on Star Wars or something <laughs> you know the, the entire series and sand because this will take several days to do this just again a slow process but this step right here makes a huge difference in the end in your paint job so it's, it's worth it so if you take the time to do it 
you'll end up with a really good paint job. That is if you don't screw the paint up. <laughs> So like, um, like parts that won't get wet sanded are parts like this, these mechanical parts. Um, there's, there's no need to, and they look really good anyway. So this will paint it really nicely. Um, like the gun, I'll, I'll wet sand, I'll wet sand the gun, but the, the initially it looks, the, the overall this looks really good. Um, I'll be able to get any areas that need work basically just with the wet sanding and then any pinholes I'll fill with the putty as I go along so um, yeah so that's just a little update for this video the next step after priming I didn't video do any videotape me priming priming is really just bored to spraying paint so um, I did do a live broadcast of me doing this in on June it was three hours of me spraying primer <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't anything exciting but uh, so yeah, so prime, wet sand, um, you know, fix any pinholes and stuff like that. And then another round of primer and then we're good for paint. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still a ways from starting to put paint on this, but I do have a color scheme in my head and what I want to do. And it should be pretty cool. So it's quite a bit different from the one I did last year. So I'm uh, excited to, to spray paint now that I have an idea of what I want to do. And my client is giving me complete freedom. He's like, do what you want to do. You're the artist. I give you artistic freedom, so he's really cool. Um, let me do that. And he's super chill and super, <laughs> as my other clients are, they're just, um, they let me take my time. They let me take breaks and work on other stuff. So, uh, yeah, they're cool. Um, I really appreciate uh, the guys that I'm building for right now because they're um, just, they're relaxed. You know, they, they're not stressed out about their projects, you know. Um, they know they'll get them. I have not had an unsatisfied customer yet. I've had a lot of customers in the past eight or nine years, so. Um, I learned real quick. My very first commission taught me the, uh, um, unless you do this full time as a job, don't promise a project by a certain date because <laughs> life happens. <laughs> And you know that that day comes, and they're like, well, "Where's my project?" And you're like, "Well, you know, I had this, this, and this, and this." And you know, it's all about communication. As long as you communicate with your clients and let them know what's going on. Hey, you know, I got sick, or hey, I got this coming up, or whatever. Um, that's just really important because you know you want to make they, they you know they're paying you for a service, and you want to make sure you respect that and give them what they're paying you for. You know, so. So it's important on the uh, builder's end to keep to communicate. Uh, I was reading a thread the other day on Facebook of a really well well known builder on YouTube um, who uh, had promised a project by a certain date to someone, and uh, that date came and gone, and several months came and gone. And this guy is watching his YouTube channel, and he's got all these other things going on. Well, he's like, well, why aren't you delivering my project when you said it'd be done by this date? And that's just one of those things where he wasn't communicating with his client, and I don't know whatever happened to that, but um, yeah, that's not a good situation to be in on, on either end. So, and I'm lucky that I, I get paid to do this at, uh, every once in a while, and it helps feed my <laughs> resin addiction, <laughs> which is quite severe. So, yeah, that's really it for this video just wet sanding, um, filling in any imperfections I see as I go and uh, just getting it ready for the final round of primer. Uh, this on a rare occasion, I'll have to do three rounds of primer, but um, this kit, I, I don't anticipate that. On the Sananju, there are a few pieces I had to prime twice, or three times, um, even though my cleanup was really good. But like I said, that kit just needed a lot of love. So, yeah. So uh, anyway, I said I wasn't gonna make a 20 minute video about sanding, but I did anyway. But uh, thanks for watching as always, and the next video of this will be, um, I'll do an update before I put paint on it and sh um, just kind of discuss my paint, my paint scheme before I start throwing paint on. But that's, that's a little bit of ways away, a couple weeks at least, because I got Wonderfest coming up next week, and um, I got two other commissions. So I've got a lot of projects on my bench, and I busted out Thor the other day, so 
yeah I'm kind of got my plate full but it's my own doing which is okay it's nice to have several projects so you can bounce between them all and you don't get burnt out on a single project because that does happen so it's nice to oh I'm kind of getting burnt out on this I'll go work on this for a day or a few hours or oh I can do this while the paint's drying or epoxy drying or something so you know, it's, it's nice to break it up a little bit so all right well again 20 minutes of me rambling on and sanding um as always this is matt rosick aka mvm3897 signing off thanks for watching guys if you have any questions put them in the comments and i'll be happy to answer thanks bye